Hello, on this R part 18 of this 16 story building using the structure portal structure, we are about entering into the sub structure design, which is basically the pi foundation design. And looking at this building right now, if you are a good follower of Ekideo, you should know that we, we started this building from the part 1 up to this part 18. So currently right now, we are done with the super structure design and we have checked all our members and everything and everything looks okay. So we are now about to enter into the substructure, which we said to use a pi foundation for the foundation design of this 16 story building. So right now, before we must begin our pi foundation design, pi foundation basically using this software comprises of three steps and that three steps are one, you must first design for the pie cap, then you will now go and design for what? For the pie, and then you will now go and design for the pie connecting beam, which is most times called grid beams. Okay. So now, out of these three um, stages of pie foundation design using this software, each of the stages again comprises of sub stages. Okay. So right now we are going to begin first with the pie cap, which is the first stage of pie foundation design using this software portal structure and with that before we must begin the pi foundation design we are meant to make or to perform some settings which we conform to and which will also be useful during the pi foundation design along this um, design now if you don't follow up these steps and if you don't perform those settings then you will have issues on your pi foundation design so right now we are beginning with the pi cap and before that, we will we'll have to go and make some settings, okay? So right now, I will have to go out from this design, what? Um, from this design interface and go back to my model view interface, okay? So right now, I'll just go right quickly here, click, click on display here, and then go out from this design interface and enter into what? Into the model interface, okay? So on this now, I will now have to come here and click on what? Click on this thing that says visual interrogation here. Now, on clicking on this now, the next thing I'll do right now is to now allow it to now display. So once the, the, the dialog box displays, I will now go and turn off this design status interface. Okay. And then now keep it on none, which will now take us to the model interface. Okay. So right now, I'll just scroll up. As you can see right now, it is currently on the design status interface. I will now scroll up here. And then once I scroll up, I will now have to go and activate the non interface. So this non interface right now takes us to the model interface where we did our modeling, which is around the part one, part two, up to part 15 and all that. So right now, once this, this non interface now is now being activated, it will change from this status to now model interface. Okay. So with this now, I will now come here and then click on what? Okay. So you cannot see now that it has not changed from the status to the model interface so we have now moved from the what from the design interface to the model interface as you can see right now so this now becomes our model interface which we have now landed okay so right now to still proceed before we can begin to set the settings which are going to use for the pie cap design the first thing we're going to do is to now make it to be on the plan view because we cannot work directly on this 3D view interface. So right now, I will now move on to now make it to be on the plan view, okay? Now, I will have to click on this place now. On this story zero here, I will make my story zero to be active. So I'll click on story zero, knowing that all design for foundation or substructure starts from story zero, okay? Except you have a basement, where story zero now becomes the basement and then your foundation will now become the minus okay so right now i will now come here right click here and then turn on my plan view and then click on what change to plan view and i'll wait for it to now um to now change or switch from the 3d view interface to the plan view interface okay so right now it's trying to switch from the 3d view interface to the plan view interface so let, let, let's give it a y for it to change on that So on this now, you can now see that we are now on the plan view, which is on the story one plan view. Sorry, on the story zero plan view. Now, if I now activate my story one now, you will also see that we are that we are still going to be on the plan view. Now, it is on the plan view that you can now make your settings for the for the pie cap design. Okay. 
now the pie cap design requires different settings okay more than two settings okay so currently i will show you the four settings that you are going to do before you can begin your pie cap design so the first setting you, you are going to do is to make sure your axial load for each of the columns and the walls are showing directly on the plan view okay so if you check it right now you cannot see that on our column here the, the, the only label we have is the column name and the beams going to the columns those are the labels that we have so right now we are going to bring out the worst conditions for the load so we are going to bring out the worst column load combinations for each of these columns and by doing that don't get it twisted um let me show you because you, you we, are, we are going to bring out all the all the combinations we are going to select them and all that okay so right now we'll now come here and then click on this place here and then go back to visual interrogation but this time around you will not click on the what on the static design you just come here and then click on what the column plan here now on the column plan here the first thing you do is to what click on where they say axial load and then nodal load okay so you can click on nodal loads or click on axial load so most times you can just check the two of them okay now these are the two loads which will have the maximum load combination leave other ones like temperature they are minor loads leave the pm moment and the shear force they are minor and all that okay and then make sure you click on the at the at the what at the bottom and not, not at the top because the column carries its maximum load or you get the maximum axial load at the bottom of the column and not at the top of the column okay so don't click on the on the top only check the bottom one okay now once you've done that the next thing you're going to do right now is to now come here and then click on this now once you click on this now the next thing you do is now begin to now select the load okay so just hold on for it to drop down so as you can see right now we have several load cases as you can see that we have the g load which is minor we also have the q load which is life load which is the minor and then from this place now we now begin to now combine the q plus p1 which is the pattern life load one of that now right now i'll really go down to this place here now once i'm here right now you can now see that since this building has a wind load you can see that it also has a window of NS and all that, okay? So right now, the first load that we are going to bring out is this. So just follow me up with this. The first load I'm going to turn on, I'll turn on this load here. The G plus Q P1 in bracket G plus Q P1, okay? So I'll turn this on and then I'll turn this on also. And then I'll now go all, all, all the way down here. I'll skip this one here. And turn this on okay and then i'll go again go all the way down again and then turn this on and turn this and this on okay so with this now i will now move on again okay yes i have turned this on yes so these are the load that you are going to turn on this one this this and then this okay and then now come here and click on what okay then come here right now and click on what the final OK here. So with this now, you will now see that each of the columns will be having the their own column loads based on the combinations that we have what selected. Okay, and on that right now, you will now be able to see the maximum load combination. So with this now, you cannot see that each of the load right now for the column has its own combination. Although when we are about to design for the pie cap, there is still chance for us to check if this if this condition that 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 we have chosen here are the maximum because on that place we are now going to see the total combination and the maximum okay but right now these are the column these are the combinations that you are meant to um, bring out they can see that each of the column right now has different combination of which combination two are always the maximum okay as you can see that on this column of column um column 11 we have a combination two having what 6159.5 kN, which is the maximum compared to all other ones here okay now if we also move to the other one again here which is column 12 you can see that column 12 has a uh, plus 12 and on under condition two has what 6112.4 kN, which is the maximum among all of them here so basically from experience um combination two based on this software is to have the maximum load combination okay 
Although, like I said again, during the pie cap design, we will be able to see the um the 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 maximum load because in that place, it will have to also add up the the BM moment force and the shear force and that, and then gives all the critical um the like the critical load that is going on that column and also going to the pie cap and then, and then to the pie. Okay, so right now. Under this column right now, which is the column, uh, this is column 10, you can see that we have a smaller um, load, load here, as your load, as you can see that for this condition 2 is what, 3137.5, as you can see. So basically, condition 2 are always the maximum. Also for the walls, also for the walls also, you also see that it also has its own combination. Although, on the walls now, based on the shape of the wall, you can see that this shape is what rectangular. You can now see that we have the maximum combination for loads to be on combination what? Five, which is six thousand three o two three o eight point seven. Okay, but for the columns, for the columns, combination two are always seems to be the highest. Okay, so right now we will now go again and check other ones too, as you can see on this other one now. Okay, this other one here, combination two right now is not basically um the highest, but what combination three. Okay, so you can now see that that is why I selected each of the combinations because combination two. 3, 5, 7, 8, and 9 are said to be the maximum among all other load case or load combinations. And among these um, 7 load combinations here, which is 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, you will not be able to see your maximum among them. Okay? So right now, though, the one that carries, though, that is more occurrence is Commission 2. As you can see, that most of our columns, as we have seen, are having Commission 2. This, this one right now has Commission 8, as you can see that. And then this one also has the maximum to be, to be what three, and then this one also has the maximum to be under combination um, combination um, two. That's fine. Two has the maximum here, and this also has what has uh, this has the maximum to be combination two. Okay, so combination two is most occurrence. I know that this is also combination two, and this also combination um, two, which is the most occurrence. And all that. So, combination two basically is the most occurring uh, maximum load combination that you're going to see and or have. In this other one right now, we have the most occurrence to be combination what? Three. No, combination um, seven. No, combination um, eight. That's yes. Okay. So, but in regards to all this, during the pie cap design, you will now see there will be a, a place where we are going to check for the pie, for the column load, which will now see the maximum at, at all. You see the maximum, it can be it can be a condition one, condition ten, and all that. But basically, from experience, it is based it it, it, will, it it will choose from this one that are listed, which is from two, three, five, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so right now, this is the first step that you are gonna do, which, which is the first settings. This is very, very important. Don't think it is not important, very, very important when it comes to pie design. Okay, when it comes to pie foundation design, like I said. Pie foundation design comprises of three steps, which is one, the pie cap, two, the pie foundation itself, sorry, the pie design itself, and then the grid beam design, which is the last. Okay. Now, if you are if you are familiar with how to design um, foundation beams when we are doing for pie for sorry for high foundation and, and, and all that, and also for white strip, then you will be able to design for your grid beam because it is still the same step. Although during the modeling of the grid beam. That is when I will have to show you. You will you need that, okay? So right now we have done the first step by bringing out this column load and all that for, for each of the columns. So if you are following up this video, I would advise you use the time frame, the time period that we are going to come again to write down for each of the column, write down the maximum column load for, for, for each of the column. You can take your um your small data or, or your small notebook and write them down column 12 has this column this has, and all that okay so our advice you do that and then follow us on that and then we'll see you again on the part 19 which will now enter into the pie cap design okay so see you again on the part 19 now if you are new on ekidel and you have not yet subscribed to our channel ekidel i would say you can do that just now by clicking on the subscribe button also give this video a thumbs up so that you don't miss our amazing videos and also, this is why I'm going to give this video a thumbs up because you liking this video will help us here on, here on YouTube to make this video to, to, to go viral and to reach wider range of engineers too. So that's the only way you can be able to share knowledge also by giving this video a thumbs up, okay? So right now, I'll be leaving you. See you again on the part 19. God bless you. Bye for now.